Good morning, Crossroads. It's so good to be with you today. My name is Josh. This is Joey. We're a couple of pastors on staff, and we have a great service in store for you. We are in week three of our series called If Walls Could Talk, and we've been talking about relationships, looking at the Bible to help us understand who we are in these relationships and how God wants us to change and adapt in our relationships. Yeah, this series has been so, so good, and we're excited to continue that today. But before we get to that, We're going to take some time, just like we do each and every week here at Crossroads, and we're going to sing some songs out to our God. And so if you're able, I invite you to stand as we sing. Good morning, church. We're so glad that you're here. Come on, are you ready to worship this morning? Lift up our voices, praise our God together.
those words that we were just saying, I choose to praise. I choose to praise. Today, we chose to come into this space for a purpose. And I believe that each and every day, we have the same choice. Each and every day, we have a choice to look at our circumstances, to look at our life, to look at maybe we might, what we might be facing that day, the mountains in front of us, and maybe they're, they're light for you. Maybe you are just dissatisfied with your job or with your life, or maybe it's something a little bit deeper like depression or anxiety or the mountain of loneliness. I don't know what you might have walked into the space with or what you face on a daily basis. But what I do know is that we have a choice whether we face those mountains and choose to focus on those things or to focus on a God who has proven himself to be faithful throughout history. When we look at scripture, we see time and time again a God who cares for his people, a God who never lets anything go to waste, a God who literally parted the waters for his people to walk through. And those are crazy physical examples, but I believe that even in the midst of what we might be facing, when we choose to surrender our mountains, surrender our situations to a God that is more powerful than that, when we trust those things to him, I believe that he wants to move in ways that we can only imagine. And it might not be what we think it will look like, but the truth is that our God is good and he is faithful and he has good plans for us. So today, can we choose to take those situations that we might be facing, the emotions that we might be carrying, the guilt, the shame, the brokenness, can we entrust it to our God and choose to focus on who he is, the one who is greater than all of it? Can we choose to praise that God today?
because it's who you said that you are and we believe that to be true. God, that you are a faithful God, a God who cares for his people, who cares about the situations in our life. So God, we choose to praise you. We choose to lay those things before you and recognize that you are bigger than all of it. Would you come and have your way in this place? Would you come and have your way in our lives, Jesus? surrender all to you. We love you. It's in your mighty and powerful name. start our service singing together and uh, singing a song that affirms that God meets us in the place that we're at, that God transforms our lives, that he moves within us. And it's true for many of us that God has moved in our lives personally, and we've seen God move in our communities. We've seen God move across the world. And I love that our God meets us where we are at no matter what, and that he continues to transform our lives day after day after day. Yeah, and, and that's why in the middle of each and every one of our services, we press pause and we enter into a moment of generosity to give back to this God who is so graciously given to us, to this God that has saved us and this God that ultimately paid the price for us. And so right now we're gonna enter into that moment of generosity. And so I'm gonna invite the worship center host to come forward to collect this morning's offering. And you can give through the passing of the bags, but you can also give through the other options that you see on the screen behind me. But whatever way you choose to give, we just want to say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for your generosity because it is because of your generosity that truly fuels the mission and vision that is Crossroads Church to help reach one more person 
in one more place. And, and so when you give, that is exactly what you are giving to. And as we kind of head into the summer months, we are believing that God has some incredible things in store for this summer. And so we just want to name a few quickly things that are coming up that we are believing for God to move in. And the first thing is that we have a CR Kids mini camp that's happening. This is formerly known as VBS, and this is going to be happening across all of our campuses. And we know God is going to show up in profound ways through that. And also in June, we're going to be doing outdoor baptisms, and we can't wait to celebrate the life change that's going to take place there. And then finally in July, we're going to be sending a team of people across the pond to London for a mission trip. And so that's going to be really special as well. Yeah, so we do truly want to say thank you. Thank you for making the mission and vision of Crossroads happen for the things that Joey talked about, but so many more like see our youth and young adults and, and uh, so much more that happens throughout the summer. And so if you're new here, you might be thinking like, this is, this is kind of new to me. This is a, a new experience for me. And we want to say if, that we're glad that you're here. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for checking us out. We hope that this is a place that feels comfortable to you, that you can call home. This is your home church. Uh, but we want you to connect with us, and we want to connect with you. And there is an opportunity for you to fill out a card uh, in the seat back in front of you. So if you're brand new, would you look in the seat back, fill out that card, and after the service, you can head out the doors and take a right. There's a welcome desk there. You can turn that card in, and one of our staff will connect with you, answer any questions that you might have about cross Crossroads and, and just get to know you a little bit better and point you in the right direction here at Crossroads. Yeah, and before Pastor Phil comes out and teaches us this morning, uh, we do have some sad news that at the at, on September 1st, Pastor Phil will be retiring. Uh, he will be stepping off his staff as the lead pastor, but will be, uh, step, be, will still be with us part-time helping with writing and teaching, and you'll still see him around. And that's the sad news, but the really exciting news is that we have a new wave of leadership that's going to be leading our church. And this is a group of people, three people that have been selected by our church and by our elders. And these are the people that we believe are going to lead us into the future and help lead where Crossroads needs to go next. And so we want to give you an opportunity to get to know these people a little bit more. So why don't you lean in and take a look at this. Phil let the church know five years ago that he was going to retire this year. And so this past year, as the elders had been trying to decide what is the best thing for our church, and they prayed and they asked God, and God led them to us. Yeah. And I think that feels like an honor yeah. because we all have unique gifts, but we also work so well together as a team. Right. There is a shared unity across the board and respect for one another. Yeah. My name is Dave Kell. I'm responsible for human resources, finance, and operations at Crossroads. And I am really excited to be a part of this shared leadership team. I have been married 44 years to Claudia. We are ministry partners. We do ministry together. We actually met uh, because of Young Life Ministry. That's how we met. And we love doing ministry and we have a lot of fun. We have three children. We have uh, two boys and a girl. We also have six grandchildren, five are girls. One is a boy and it's amazing. They all live in the Twin Cities. I worked for 35 years in business at a manufacturing company. I was half the time I was in human resources and half the time I was in operations. Also, a uh, parallel career to that was that in the churches that we were in, Claudia and I were always really involved in the ministries. We were involved in Haiti Teen Challenge. We were involved in Godtown Ministries in downtown St. Paul. We were involved in men's ministry, small groups, youth ministry. So we did a lot of ministry and have always done that uh, throughout our lives in addition to our careers. I'm excited about the future of Crossroads. I believe that we're aligned to the right mission, that we have the right people to bring about transformational life change. My name is Jonathan Mealy. I oversee Next Gen, which is kids ministry, youth ministry, and young adult ministry. I oversee the worship department, and I'm on the teaching team as well. 
and I'm so excited to be on uh, the shared leadership team. Uh, I've been married uh, to my very best friend. Her name is Carly. Uh, for the last seven years, we love to go snowboarding together or do anything outdoors. And we have two kids, uh, Juniper, she is three, full of life, uh, very spunky. And our son, Walker, he is now one, and he is just a great joy. And so our hands are very full at the Maley household. I've been in full-time ministry uh, for 11 years now, and if I think back on my life, I've actually been actively involved in ministry since I was a freshman in high school when Jesus uh, dramatically changed my life. I've been passionate about building, rebuilding, and launching ministries, and in 2017, Crossroads called me and gave me the opportunity to re-envision their youth ministry, uh, and then I got to re-envision the kids' ministry, and then we just launched our young adult ministry at Crossroads. I absolutely love Crossroads, and I think the, the thing that first comes to my mind is that we are about one more. We're about one more person and one more place uh, that give, to give them an opportunity to meet and be changed by Jesus. We really value authenticity, um, and I also just love the people. My name's Joelle Hassler, and I oversee discipleship at Crossroads. That's groups and classes and missions and baptism. I also oversee the campuses, making sure they have everything they need to accomplish our mission every single week. And I'm a member of our teaching team. I've been married to my husband, Adam, for 17 years. We actually met on a missions trip in the Dominican Republic. He was visiting there from Georgia. I was coming from Minnesota. And I am so thankful for the way that the Lord brought us together. We have two incredible children. Ryan, he's 12 and in the sixth grade. And Hannah, she's 10 and in the fourth grade. I began in full-time ministry the summer after my first year of college. It was 1999. And since then, I've been serving in urban churches and suburban churches, both small and super big churches with lots of campuses. And in all of my roles, either youth or outreach or executive ministry, I have just loved working with people and helping them know Jesus better. I love Crossroads so much, and one thing I really love about our church is that we don't take ourselves too seriously. We're obviously very serious about reaching one more person in one more place with the good news about Jesus, but we also like to have a lot of fun doing it. I'm so excited about the future of Crossroads. It feels like God has positioned us perfectly to reach out to people who are far from God and help them come to know Him. The way I feel about us is that it's an honor for me to work with you guys on the mission of Crossroads and to be called into this together. And I love that shared leadership verbiage, that it's shared because our giftedness is all different. And so the idea is that if we build our own relationship of love and unity, with that giftedness, we'll serve the church well. And I'm honored to do that with Jonathan and Joel. I think there's a lot of things that makes us excited to work with one another and I think overall it's that we have a, sh a shared uh, love and unity and respect for one another. And we have a shared unity and love for Jesus. Yeah. That's right. And it's personal with us and really meaningful in our lives. It's the most important yeah. thing in our lives. Absolutely. And I think we're, we're all really excited to serve Crossroads together. Yes. Yeah, we love Crossroads and we love the people of Crossroads and the people in our community. We are excited about what God's going to do with this team. Yeah, we are. Wow. That was good, wasn't it? Yeah. Hey, welcome, everybody. Welcome those of you at our campuses or those of you watching online, those of you in the building. Uh, the common word I heard as I was watching that about seven-minute video was the word excited. They are excited. And I'm just going to let you know that's my word, too. 
I'm excited for the future of Crossroads. I'm excited that God has entrusted leadership to those very three very capable leaders. And I'm not dead yet, and I'm not going away either, but I'm really excited that I get to take more of a backseat on the Crossroads bus and cheer those three on as they lead us into the future. So I hope you're excited as well. Uh, we have an annual meeting coming up, the great Crossroads get-together this Thursday at 6.30. So if you're curious about how this is all all going to work out, we invite you back right here at the Woodbury campus at 6.30 p.m. But that's that. This is now. I want to ask you a question as we get our journey going today. And here's the question. It's going to sound a little bit weird, um, but here, here it is. If you could be a wall inside any couple's home for 24 hours, which couple's home would you choose? And I know this sounds really weird because we do not condone creeping or peeping, all right? We don't do that. This is a pretend exercise. If you could be the wall and you would see everything and you would hear everything going on in that house, which couple would you choose? I'll give you some options, all right? Barack and Michelle. My good friend Justin and Haley. Tom, and I have no idea how to pronounce her name. We'll just call her super, Supermodel Wife. Tom and Supermodel Wife. Or, fourthly, here we go, Ryan and Blake. Which would you choose? 24 hours, you'd see and hear everything. Maybe that's not the most important question. Maybe the question is, what might you hear? And what might you see? What shocking secrets would be revealed to you? What tasty morsels of gossip would you be able to pass on? Or maybe, just maybe, you would discover that those couples are just as boring as the couples that you hang around with. I'm not really sure, but here's what I do know. We're in week three. This is the last week of our series, which we're calling If Walls Could Talk. And if you weren't here the last couple of weekends, it's been really incredible teaching. Joelle and Jonathan just hit the ball out of the park, and they did all the hard work. They did all the, the deconstruction of the things that we are all, maybe because of COVID, maybe the last two years, just we just needed to remove some stuff from our relationships. Call it asbestos, call it bad habits, bad practices, whatever. And I get the easy job today, which I'm really excited about the easy job of sort of rebuilding the wall. What does it take to rebuild and to have healthy, strong, mutually satisfying relationships? In fact, today, I get to share with you the number one secret. The number one secret when it comes to having a great relationship. And maybe you're thinking right now, what I'm going to say is, there is no number one secret. No, there actually is. If you would be able to sit right now in the home of the best friendship in the apartment, the condo of two people who have the, the best friendship on the planet, or if you could be in the home of the condo or the apartment of this married couple who has the marriage that you've always dreamed of, I believe that the walls inside those condos, homes, apartments would all say the exact same thing. And this principle, this secret applies whether we're talking about friendships, because some of you aren't married, but it, it applies to friendships and it also applies to marriages. This is the number one secret to having a healthy, thriving relationship. And if you're interested, I'm so glad you're with us today. Now, if you were to watch a romantic movie, you would, you would hear that the number one secret is this. The number one secret is search far and wide and high and low and find your soulmate. The one who completes you. The one who has you at hello. Yeah. Now those make really good movie lines. And some of you saw those movies too. But they don't really work in real life. So what really is the secret? And normally I would wait to the very end to tell you so you don't check out. I'm going to give it to you right now. I'm just going to give you the number one secret and then we're going to unpack it together. Here it is right here. The number one secret. Relationships at work are the product of hard work. In other words, in other words, marriage works if you work at it and friendships work if you work at them. That's the number one secret. And that's what the wall of, of any home, any condo, any apartment where that, that relationship is thriving, that's what the wall would say to you, that the, the key, the secret is relationships at work are the product of hard 
work. Relationships that, that thrive, re, re, relationships that blossom are blossoming because the, the ground underneath those relationships has, has been watered and it's been weeded and it's been fertilized. Th- those relationships prosper. Those relationships work beca- because people in those relationships are making them work. They're paying attention to those relationships. Now, there's a, a book in the, the New Testament called Hebrews, and it's kind of a, a, an interesting book in that we don't even know who wrote it, but there's a book in the Bible called Hebrews, and the author of Hebrews in chapter 13 and 12 is, is talking about just some real practical teaching on a bunch of different topics, and he gets to marriage, and here's what he says about marriage. He says, give honor to marriage, give honor to marriage, and remain faithful to one another In marriage. And I'm always interested because the New Testament was written in a language that is no longer even spoken, Koine Greek. But that word honor there is this word right here. It's timios. Timios. It's the word timios. And it simply means to revere or to treasure or to elevate or to prize. Timios was used to describe the appropriate response to something that has great worth in something that has great value. Kind of like, <clears throat> like this right here. This right here. Now, um, this is a 1963 Ferrari GTO. And uh, they only made like 35 of these. The entire world. That, that's all they made of these. And I know I've been standing up here for months saying that I want a Range Rover. And I know some of you have been planning on buying me a Range Rover. And I, I get it. But now, I want this car right here, all right? So, um, but, but how many of you think Pastor Phil's going to look good in that, in that Ferrari? Go ahead and put your hands up everywhere. Yeah? You, okay, I, I do too. You can pick one of these up right now. Right now. By the way, take a guess. How much does this thing cost? A lot. I heard a lot, yeah. Here's the answer. You can buy this right now for $70 million. Yeah, this car right now can be purchased for $70 million. Can you say retirement gift? <laughs> yeah, you, you, you really can't say it. So I, I'm bringing this up because I, I really... Would you park it in the street at night? Number two, would you drive it in the middle of the winter where there's sand and salt on the roads? Number three, would you throw the keys to your 16-year-old son or daughter who just got their driver's license? Let's say the answer's out loud. No. No, no you wouldn't do that, would you? You would... You ready for this? You would timios, you would give honor to that car because of its great value and its great worth. And here's my question. Are we who are married? Are we married people? Are we giving honor to our marriages? Are we, I'm looking at myself right now. Are, are, are we showing them the proper care, giving them the proper respect are, are, are we, are we, are we timios? Are we giving honor to that marriage relationship? For those of you who have a really good friendship, are you giving honor to that friendship? Because let me just, I'll just be blunt. Because I've been in this people game a long time. I've seen a lot of relationships that have worked. And I've seen a lot of relationships, sadly, that have not, that have not worked. And let me just tell you what the common denominator is. Why don't relationships work, Pastor Phil? One word. Here it is right here. It's neglect. It's neglect. It's because couples, relationships, friendships, marriages, we stop honoring them. We stop protecting them. We stop working on them. We stop giving energy to them. And there's nothing passive about any of that. And one of my big pet peeves is what our culture has done to the word love, you know, love. Because there's nothing passive. In fact, here, here's what I'd say about love. Love is active. It's not passive. Love is a verb. And the problem in our culture is we've turned it into a noun. It's not a noun. It's a verb. Love is a verb. It's something you do. It's active. It's not a noun. It's not a thing. And again, this is one of my pet peeves because we've turned love into nothing more than just a feeling. It's a feeling that you feel when you've never felt that way before. (laughs) 
Now, there are feelings involved in love. Don't get me wrong. But love is more than just a feeling. Love is more than an, an ocean of emotion. Love is more than a quiver in your liver. It's way more than that. It's like if you hear people talking today, I fell in love. I fell out of love. I fell in love. I fell out of love. I fell in It's like, well, wait a minute. Is love a ditch you fall into and out of? Is it a hole? What do you, I mean, what are we talking? This is, again, friends, we got we to get this right. Because there's so much. There's so much at stake. Now, right after Jesus did this, right after Jesus got down on his hands and knees with a a towel over his arm and a basin of water, right after he washed the dirty feet of his disciples, note this, the same guys that were about to disown him and desert him and diss him, right after he did that and right right before he hung on a cross and bled and died for their sins and my sins and your sins, Right after he washed the feet and right before he hung on the cross, Jesus gave us this command. This is in John chapter 13. John was a follower. He says, I, I, so now I am giving you a new commandment. Love each other. Now right there, the disciples all have gone, Jesus, there's nothing new about that. We've been hearing that forever. And Jesus is like, I'm not through. I'm not through. There's nothing new, but I'm not through. And here it is. Here's the new part. Just as I have loved you, that was new. Just as I have loved you, you should love each other. Just, hey, think, think about this. Think about the relation, the, that friendship. Think about the, the marriage you're in right now. Are we loving like that? Because Jesus is saying, just as I have loved you, now my assignment to you is to go and love each other that way. Selflessly, selflessly, like a servant. Like a servant who would wash dirty feet of someone who disowns you and disses you and deserts. Love like selflessly and sacrificially, giving up your life, giving up your life. For that other person, Jesus, that's how I want you to love. You see, relationships that work are the product of what? Hard work, selfless work, sacrificial work. Now, if, you, if I've ever done a wedding that you've been to, or maybe I've done your wedding, um, I try to remember to say every time I do a wedding, I try to say that wedding or that marriage is like an empty box, okay? In fact, if you ever get married and invite me to attend your wedding, I am going to give you an empty box as a gift. Partly because I'm cheap and partly because of what I'm going to say to you right now, all right? Marriage is like an empty box. Just just look at this empty box here. here. Here's the deal. When you get back from your honeymoon, this is what you have. You have an empty box. And the only way you're going to get something out of that box is if you put what? Yeah, something into that box. Here, here's, here's, here's the simple, simple truth, friends. Friendships that are well-fed, marriages that are well-fed, they thrive. It's just like your bank account. If you don't put something into it, you can't get anything out of it. It's like your, your tank in your car. Unless you put gas in that, you can't drive it around very long. And marriage and relationships are the same way. If we don't invest in them, we can't get anything out of them. Because they're like an empty box. Feed your marriage and it will be fulfilling. Feed your friendships and they will be fulfilling. Okay, let's get practical, all right? Let's talk, okay, what what is it that we need to feed our relationships? What what are the building materials if we're going to have a a great relationship? what, what What do we need to do if love is active, if it's not passive, if if it's a verb and not a noun, if great relationships are the product of hard work, what kind of work do we need to put into them? Four things. Four things. If I was the Pope, I would command you to write these down. I'm not the Pope, but take them for what they're worth. Here's the first thing. Attention. Attention. You want to have a great friendship? You want to have a great marriage? It First of all, it takes attention. It takes attention. And when you first, you know, look at it. When you first fall in love, by the way, anybody can fall in love. All you need are some hormones. All you need is a pulse and you can fall in love. But staying in love over the course of time, that takes other things. What we're talking about right now, attention. And when you first fall in love, it's like you're majoring on that other person. 
You notice everything, right? You listen, you ask questions. You're like, you're just like all over it. And, and I get it. You can't keep, there's nobody can keep up that kind of intensity, right? I mean, because all of a sudden now you have the job, you have a career, you have, you have kids, you have a dog, you have a cat, whatever. And you can't keep that kind of intensity. But that doesn't mean we can't work at paying attention. Because if we don't pay attention to each other, we will drift away from each other. And it's so hard to pay attention in our distracted world. And you know what the biggest culprit is? Ugh, my jeans are getting tight. Um, you know what the biggest culprit is? I'm holding it in my hand right here. This is a problem. And I have no answer to this. But this is a problem. I read and I rechecked the statistic that we grab and look at this thing 364 times a day. Wow. It's really hard to have a great marriage if you're married to your screen. So I just want to throw that out there, friends. We need to give each other attention. Secondly, what, what's the second thing we got to feed our relationships? Appreciation. Appreciation. And this is hard, too. This is hard because what fascinates us when we first fall in love, we end up, those things frustrate us. You know, it's true. Opposites attract, right? But then over time, what do they do? They attack. Because <laughs> all of a sudden those, oh, that's so cute that he does this. Oh, it's so cute that she does it. All of a sudden those things drive us nuts, right? And so it's, why are you all laughing? Is this like hitting home or something? <laughs> Yeah, and the reason for, for that is what happens over time is all we begin to see are the negatives, right? It's really easy. If I asked you right now, if, with your best friend or if you're a married person, your spouse, if I asked you right now, what are the things that are driving you nuts? You'd go, oh, you'd probably pull out a list, right? But what we need to do is we need to start looking a little bit deeper. We need to pause and we need to ponder and we need to start looking at the things that we're actually grateful for. And to do that, we have to practice what I want to call mindful awareness. Those things are there. They're not as obvious as the other things, but those things are there. And we've got to look for them. Appreciation. You know, the truth is we fall in love with people who admire us. And that's why we have to continue to look for those things that we can just note and that's what I'm asking us to do this week. If you're a married person, I'm asking us for the next seven days to find one thing every day, one thing you appreciate, and verbalize it. It won't kill us, and it will bring life to our relationship. Third thing we need to add into our box is we have to practice giving affection. You, you've read the statistics, right? That the average human being needs eight to ten meaningful touches every day. Eight to ten per day. Now, when you first start dating this person, easy peasy, right? You are doing eight to ten meaningful touches per minute. <laughs> Hence the phrase, get a room, right? Yeah, you heard that. <laughs> but what happens over time is we quit doing that. We quit doing that. We, we quit giving th this kind of affection, and here's what I want you to hear. You cannot stay in touch without touch. You cannot stay in touch without touch. And by touch, I don't mean groping. Some of you guys are like, this is a great, this is my best sermon ever. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Not talking about groping. I'm talking about an arm around the shoulder, a hug, maybe holding hands. That, that's what I mean. And I know this is, you know, this is for some of you that you haven't, you maybe have not dished out eight to ten meaningful touches all year. And this is something that you're going to have to really struggle with. But I want to encourage you, and don't blame COVID. Well, you know, the six foot rule, we got to stay sick. No, don't blame COVID. And, and if you really need to reshift your thinking about this whole thing because you don't want to touch him or you don't want to touch her, just think of it this way embracing your biggest mistake. That was a joke. Okay. <clears throat> I have to see if you're listening to me, and you didn't get that one. All right, one more. One more thing we need to put in the, the empty box, and that's adventure. That's adventure. This is where you engage the right side of your brain. You get up off the couch. You get out of your sweats. You get dressed up. You throw a little Old Spice on, and you go out on a date. Remember dates? Remember these things called dates? 
I'm not sure they're ever supposed to end, but for far too many of us, they do end over time. And every relationship needs some adventure. In fact, it's commanded in the Bible. I found a verse. <laughs> I did find a verse. This is in the Old Testament, Ecclesiastes chapter 9. So go ahead, Solomon, the wisest man who ever lived outside of Jesus. Eat your food with joy. Drink your wine, grape juice. <clears throat> Eat, drink your wine with a happy heart. For God approves of this. Wear fine clothes with a splash of cologne. By the way, the Hebrew word here is old spice. <laughs> yeah. Right. Wear fine clothes with a splash of cologne. Live happily with the woman you love. You got to read your Bible. It's in there. It's all kinds of great stuff. Yeah. You see, let's go back to the, 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 the big idea. To the big idea, friends. That, that for, for relationships to work, we've got to work at them. Marriages that work are the result of hard work. Friendships that work are the result of hard work. We've got to feed them for them to be fulfilling. And some of you are thinking right now, because I can read your mind. What some of you are thinking right now is, but what if? Pastor Phil, but what if? What if I give those things? You know, I, I throw in the appreciation and the, you know, the adventure and I do, do the affection and do all, I do all the attention. All the, what if I give those things and get nothing back? You don't have to raise your hand if you're thinking this. Some of you were. What, what if I do all that? What if I give honor to the relationship and I get nothing back at all? You're not going to like my answer. You're not going to like my answer. It doesn't matter. That's the answer. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. You can only own you. I can only own me. I can only do my part and I leave the rest up to God. You do what you're supposed to do. You feed that thing. You honor that thing. You do what you're supposed to do and you leave the rest in God's hands. And I get that from Jesus. Because Jesus said these words in the great Sermon on the Mount. He said, do to others whatever you would like them to do to you. Note what it doesn't say. It doesn't say, do to others what they do to you. Do to others what they've done to you. No, that's the rule of the jungle. Jesus is the golden rule. Jesus says, do to others as you hope they, as, they, as you want them to do to you. And here's what I believe. That if you do that, if you do to others what you want them to do to you, if you do that over time, even though you're getting nothing back at all, I believe that over time, God's going to work in that other person's heart. Because that kind of love, that kind of selfless, sacrificial love, when it's done over and over and over and over again, even though it's not getting anything back, that kind of love over time, look at me, it becomes irresistible. So do what Jesus said. Just do it. Do to that other person what you want that person someday to do to you. Now, we, uh, we sat down recently with some, just some real people. Because, you know, it's, it's, it's easy for me up here to talk about all this stuff. But what does it look like in real relationships. Well, we sat down with a few couples at Crossroads last week, and we just recorded some of their responses to some of these kinds of things. So lean in with me right now as we watch this together. We tell each other we love her about 30 times a day. You know, it just... And I'm still She's finding. always patting my butt. You know, it's always... I'm... Oh, did I say that on the film? No, don't take that. Out. Uh, I'm <laughs> <laughs> My name is Jim Knox. Linda Knox. And we've been married 55 years. This is my <laughs> Let's try that again. Why don't you go first, dear? No, you can introduce yourself. Okay, I'm Kristen. Um, this is my husband, Jordan. And we've been married for 12 and a half, 12 and a half years. <laughs> Hi, my name is Chris Crutchley. 
Hi, I'm Julie Crutchley, and we've been married for five years. Well, we were 19 when we got married. And we didn't have any idea what it was going to be like or what it was about. So when I was thinking through my future life, I would cut out um, for magazines, like people or houses or whatever, and I would glue them in this book. And I had um, a tall, dark, handsome football player, <laughs> husband. <laughs> um, I am tall. I ended up with a tall, blonde musician. I don't really know what I thought marriage would be like when I was younger. And that was because I, I came from a broken home. Well, it wasn't quite perfect. I mean, no. we, we got married back in 66. By 79, I think it was quit or get. Oh. Quit or get out. Yeah. He, he drank, and uh, then we went to a counselor. You know, when we first were dating and married, it was just us. Mm -hmm. Like, it was Kristen, and it was me, and that was it. Where now, we have dogs, we have kids. Mm -hmm. And so, a huge thing is we've just, we've had to be more intentional about the time that we have. We need to tell our time where it's going to go so that we make sure that we still have mm -hmm. enough time for the two of us to be together. We had kids right away, right? We found mm -hmm. out as soon as we got home from our honeymoon that um, Julie was pregnant. Um, and so that was, you know, something we'd prayed about, but we didn't know that it was going to happen that fast. And I, I think if it wasn't for our view of a relationship in a biblical sense, um, I, I, I think we would have struggled a lot more if we, if we didn't have that. We went, went to him based on a, the meeting we had with our pastor. He said, you need, you need counseling, and you, Jim, need to quit drinking. You know, so we uh, stuck it out. I really didn't want to be in there, but you know, I wanted the marriage to work, so. You need to have God in your life, because it takes three of us to have a marriage. We do all kinds of things together. It's more together now, and it's, coffee dates or, or dates or we're praying together now, which we didn't. Our Bible studies has helped us tremendously in this church. Every Sunday we go to church and then we talk about what we've heard. Um, and more recently we're, we've been doing Bible plans together and then talking every night about what we've read. You know, I think it's important to feed your marriage, especially as things change, just getting in a community of other believers and having our girls surrounded in that, keeping that line of communication open between each other, um, I think that's been really helpful. The first thing that he uh, started to talk about was communication. Uh, that was probably the crux, you know. Yeah. Um, we had exercises we had to do, we had a little notebook we had to write down because we yeah. had arguments. And you get mad at each other and you don't talk. Uh, so we, we went, through that, went through that in detail. It seems like every time we brought something up, you know, we spent a day on it. I think marriage is one of the best things that you can do. It is also one of the hardest things. And so I think Knowing if you're going into marriage that you are um, setting out on one of life's best adventures and best journeys, um, but it's not going to be easy. And so it takes work and it takes dedication. Um, but I just get really excited for people who are getting married because I think it's such a special partnership that you get to lean into. And, um, you know, I think you get to start an adventure with someone that will become your best friend if they're not already. Once in a while, I'll ask Jordan, like, what do you like about being married? <laughs> and he'll just kind of say, like, I like that we get to do life together. If someone was struggling with their marriage, I believe they should go to a counselor and at least try to work it out. Not have, like, a temper and not want to work it out, but you have to want to work it out. And I think it doesn't hurt to, to get into the word get into prayer. So a couple of struggling, um, I would, I would tell them to you know, think back to the early stages of their, of their dating relationship, of their marriage, and try to remember those things that, you know, gave them that spark to begin with. 
I mean, even in our marriage, there's been times where we've kind of felt like it was just going through the motions a little bit. And so we've then we've had to have conversations of like, okay, well, we're just, we're not being intentional. We're not, you know, we're not having specific time together. And so it's then going back to what we used to do and, and finding kind of some of those things that, that used to bring us more joy. I can think back to a specific time when we were on opposite sides of the spectrum on a decision that we had to make. And we it was just causing a lot of tension, I think, in our marriage that we were just, you know, we would see each other after work and we would just try to be figuring this thing out and we weren't agreeing. We finally asked some friends, like, what do we do? They gave us some incredible advice. And had we not reached out to them, I don't think we would be in as healthy of a place as we are now. Yeah, when we were in such a rough marriage, I can't even imagine that it was going to be this wonderful now. It is it's just a lot of him got us together. So good. So many things about that. So good. Uh, I, I want to go back really quickly to those four things we just talked about, uh, from attention to affection to adventure, appreciation. I, and I just want to say, um, for those of you who are, who are married, uh, those four, the common denominator, the, those four things were all present. They were all being practiced early on in your relationship. Otherwise, that relationship of yours wouldn't have progressed from dating to engagement, courtship to, to marriage. Those, those four things were happening. But, but maybe, I mean, that was then and this is now, maybe those things haven't been happening. And maybe they haven't been happening for months or maybe those things haven't been happening for years or maybe for some of you, those things haven't been happening for decades. And all of a sudden, you, you know, this, this relationship thing has gone from ideal to ordeal to I want a new deal. And if this is where you're at, I, I just, I, I just want to say a couple things to you. In fact, I, I'm going to reiterate something that, that Jordan just said in the video. Like if that's where you're at, if, if you're here or here, go back. This is what he said. It was so brilliant. Go back. Go back and think about when things were going well. When, when things were healthy, when things were vibrant, when there was a mutually satisfying thing going on, go back there and just evaluate that and then say, what was that? And are we doing that now? And if not, maybe we should start doing those things again. Here's the way I put it for you. To get what you once had, you must do what you once did. And it's worth it. It's worth it. But to do, to get there, to get there, you, you got to go back and do what you once did. What you did to fall in love, you must continue to do to stay in love. And I, and I, and I know right now, some of you are thinking, um, <laughs> I don't feel like it. I just don't feel like it. And I get that. I get that. But what I want to say is, is simply this, is that feelings follow actions. Feelings follow actions. You may have to do the right actions for days, weeks, months, because you're not going to feel the feelings, but it, it may take a while because the feelings always lag behind. But if you do the right things, here's what happens, is the feelings, eventually, they catch up to you. It might be a while, but they're going to get, they're going to, they're going to get there. Feelings follow action. So if you don't feel like it, push your feelings aside and just do the right things for a while. And the other thing I, I want to say, and this is for all of us who call ourselves followers of Jesus. I, I know some of you aren't there yet, and this, you get a pass on this, by the way. So glad you're here. Maybe you're just checking out Christianity or kicking the tires of the whole thing, and that's fine. This is for those of us who call ourselves followers of Jesus. Here it is. Since when 
do feelings call the shots? Because God calls us to do a whole lot of things that, that we don't feel like doing, right? There's a whole lot of hard things that God calls us, his followers, to do. So again, I'm just saying, push the feelings aside for a while. Do you think God the Father felt like sending his one and only son to this planet to die like a criminal? Do you feel like Jesus, the son, felt like being whipped and beaten and nailed to a cross to die for my sins and yours? Do you think he felt like that? No, no. So again, just get over this, I don't feel like it. And do, and do, and do what God is calling you to do and leave the results in his hands. Let's start working at our relationships because marriages and friendships that work are the product of hard work. Let's start working at things. Let's start honoring those relationships. And when, and when, and when, and when, and when things start improving in your relationships, when all of a sudden your friendship or your marriage just starts tracking up and to the right, here's what I want you to do. Because you put into practice what I taught today. I want you to go to my Ferrari Facebook GoFundMe page, and I want you to make a very, very generous contribution. Because it's going to happen. This is going to happen. This is going to happen if you start putting these principles to work. I'm just kidding about that Ferrari thing, but I'm not kidding about let's get to work. Let's get to work. All right, let me pray. God, thank you so much. Thank you so much, God, for sending your son Jesus to this world to show us, not to tell us, but to show us what real love looks like. And Jesus, we thank you for that kind of love that you modeled for us. And our prayer today is very simple, that you would help us to love that way, to love with a selfless and to love with a sacrificial kind of love. Motivate us, God, to do that. And we will give you all the praise and all the glory for what you're going to do. We're going to give you all the praise and glory for it. And we ask this in your name. Amen. I honestly wish I would have had this series when I first started dating my wife. Um, so those of you that are single or, or maybe you're just in the beginning stages of dating, like, Take hold of what Phil is talking about. Rewatch the last two weeks and remember what this means to you in preparation for the future. Um, we do have a few resources for you on your way out. Again, we have resource cards for you. These are our cue cards. They have questions on them. They have scripture on them. They have some application points where you can take action. You can actually take a step and you can do something about the relationship that you're in. And then if you're looking to further uh, understand and further dive into what God has for you in the relationship that you're in, we have a few books for you at a resource table out the doors and to your right. You can buy them on hand here. Uh, we can uh, do that for you. We can also scan a QR code and buy them online yourself. But uh, great books and great resources to continue developing the relationships in your life. We hope that you come back next week. We have a new series kicking off, and we know that today is a beautiful day. So get out there. Enjoy the beautiful day today. We'll see you next week.